Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope you all are very well. So, uh, you know, we have talked about cash flow statements and we have talked about how to do the accounting, right? Now, you know, going forward, we'll be uh, now seeing how to calculate this cash flow, how to value a company, how to value a stock. So we'll be discussing discounting cash flow method, DCF method, and, you know, many more. But let's, you know, let's, uh, before going to, you know, that level, let us start from the very basics and uh, try to understand uh, how we will make that decision right so as the first concept in this is called the time value of money right so we'll we'll start from the basics and we'll go on you know building it up so what is time value of money so you might have heard people saying that you know time is money so when people say that time is money what they mean is that you know you whatever time you are giving to someone you could utilize that time for earning money right but let's dive deeper into this uh, statement and try to analyze you know uh, quantitatively what 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 the statement means so for example you know i give you one million dollars today and I give you $1 million after two years, which one would you prefer? So without a blink of an eye, you'll say that, okay, first option, I what you know, what I will prefer, you give me money today. And why is that? So there are certain factors which, you know, uh, which help, uh, which helped us make that decision. First is, if I give you $1 million today, you have that opportunity and flexibility to invest that money somewhere and earn a lot more, right? So this is first part, which is the investment part. Second is the inflation. Which means that if I give you one million dollars today, you your buying power is more, right? Because things are cheaper today. After two years, they will become expensive. So whatever amount of goods you can buy from one million dollars today, that is worth more as compared to what you can buy after two years. You could you know sense that from a very simple example. Five years back, the you know packet of chips came. Let's say you know the Lay's packet, which used to come for ten rupees. Now it is for twenty rupees. So if I had hundred rupees five years back, I could have bought ten pieces of you know Lay's. And if I have 100 rupees today, I can buy only five, right? So my buying power has reduced. Third is risk. With all the tensions going on, with all, you know, uncertainty, which is there in the market, you never know whether you will get that $1 million after two years or not. So if you if you are getting today, that is more certain, right? So the risk is reduced if you are getting money today, right? So this is uh, another factor. And the last, which is that, you know, human behavior is to basically you know consume today rather than you know save it and do for future consumption so we tend to spend today you know on a house on a car on xyz things right so we tend to prefer today rather than i mean uh, consume today rather than you know uh, save it for the future consumption so these are certain factors which help us determine the time value of money why why are we uh, you know talking about that because this was a very simple example where i told you that you are getting one million dollars today and after, uh, you know one million dollars after two years but what if i what if I tell you that, okay, I'll give you $1 million, but now you have two options. One is that I'm giving you 10, 10, 10, you know, 10, 10, 10 million dollars over the period of years. And I'm giving you, let's say 20 today, 10 tomorrow, five, you know, uh, in the third year, which option would you prefer? So now here you cannot just make a random guess, right? You have to have a quantitative system to uh, make that choice. And 